This presentation provides a brief summary on the blue crab fishery and the potential interactions it may have with diamondback terrapins. Over the years, many have reported that terrapin populations around the state have been declining. As an agency, FWC is looking into various ways to better protect and conserve the terrapin population. The agency has heard a variety of concerns related to this species. Some of this expressed concern includes the mortality of these turtles in blue crab traps and ultimately requests for management changes to attempt to reduce these potential negative interactions. As part of a multi-pronged approach to diamondback terrapin conservation efforts, the Division of Habitat and Species Conservation, HSC, is exploring possession allowance and prohibiting the take of these terrapins from the wild. However, this presentation is related to the management of the blue crab fishery, and we are looking for feedback on ways we might be able to reduce potential interactions between the fishery and diamondback terrapins. Before getting into the blue crab fishery and interactions it may have with diamondback terrapins, I wanted to first show the various efforts the agency is looking into to help conserve diamondback terrapins. As part of a multi-pronged approach, staff is planning to bring forward a recommendation to the commission to limit the possession and take of these animals from the wild. These changes are being developed by HSC and are outlined on this slide. To gather feedback, HSC actually held two public workshops earlier this month and are continuing to gather public feedback on these proposals until October 2nd. More information related to this is available on the Freshwater Turtles website. The link is provided here at the bottom of the screen. Diamondback terrapins can be found along the Atlantic coast from Cape Cod through Florida and along the Gulf Coast through Texas. There are five subspecies that occur in Florida specifically, three of which are endemic to the state, meaning they can't be found anywhere outside of Florida. Diamondback terrapins are found along the entire Florida coast wherever there is suitable habitat. Although these turtles can occur statewide, we know there are some areas that have larger populations compared to others. These turtles are unique as they are the only turtle to live exclusively in brackish water habitats, which include salt marshes, mangroves, barrier islands, and tidal creeks and rivers. Research indicates that diamondback terrapins are active, whether that be foraging for food or during their nesting season, when water temperatures are greater than about 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Within Florida, that is likely most of the year in northern portions of the state and likely year round in the southern counties. These turtles are carnivorous and feed primarily on invertebrates and in smaller species of fish. The carapace height, which is measured from the bottom of the turtle to the top portion of the shell, as seen in the bottom image on the screen, of an adult terrapin varies by subspecies and by sex, but it ranges from about 1.7 to 3.5 inches, with females typically measuring much greater than males. As I mentioned earlier, there is a perception that terrapin populations have been declining for several decades due to a number of reasons. Some of these potential threats may include, but certainly aren't limited to, habitat loss and degradation, predation, road mortality, climate change, and potentially bycatch in blue crab traps. Because the preferred habitat of diamondback terrapins commonly overlaps with that of blue crabs, there is the potential for terrapins to get caught in blue crab traps. Terrapins are most likely to enter crab traps during times of the year when the water temperature is warmer, and these animals are actively foraging for food. Due to the swimming and surfacing behavior of these turtles, an animal that enters a trap attempts to exit that trap by surfacing, and unfortunately does not recognize it can leave the trap the same way it entered. If a terrapin is stuck in a trap for an extended amount of time, there is the potential for the animal to drown. Although the extent of these interactions and mortality of terrapins in blue crab traps is unclear, we know from research and conversations with industry that these interactions can happen. Bycatch reduction devices, or BRDs, can be placed in each trap entrance panel, or throat, to reduce the size of that entrance and minimize the potential of adult terrapins from ever entering crab traps to begin with. The overall goal of these bycatch reduction devices is to exclude adult terrapins from crab traps without having a significant impact on blue crab catch. There are several types and sizes, and these different designs are based on the swimming behavior and size of both blue crabs and adult terrapins. The picture on this slide shows three potential sizes that have been tested through various research projects 
and some are even required or recommended by other Atlantic and Gulf states. The two orange rectangular designs, so the bottom two devices in this photo, were designed to exclude adult terrapins based on carapace height, with the attempt to not drastically impact the abundance or size of blue crabs that could potentially enter the trap. The larger of the orange designs measures 2 inches high by 6 inches wide, while the slightly smaller orange design measures 1 and 3 quarters of an inch high by 4 and 3 quarters of an inch wide. Then the third design, which is the reddish color device, the top device in this photo, is slightly different in that it has a curved top and bottom to maximize the height of the device to better allow larger blue crabs to enter, but a much shorter width to exclude terrapins. This is because terrapins attempt to enter a trap head first and the width of the body measured from one arm to the other is much larger than the carapace height. Research shows that this device better excludes terrapins, especially the, large, or the smaller adult terrapins, while still allowing those larger sized blue crabs to enter. One fisherman with this device indicated that a blue crab measuring eight inches from one spine to the other could fit through the design. All of these devices shown on the slide are made out of plastic, but they can also be made by hand using galvanized wire. At least 12 gauge wire is typically recommended. After the wire is shaped into the appropriate dimension, it can then be attached to the throat or entrance panel of the trap with hog rings. There are different pros and cons associated with each of these designs, and we ultimately want to hear from you which of these devices you think would work best for our fishery in Florida. This slide provides various questions we would like to gather feedback on. We are trying to figure out how we can minimize potential interactions between traps and terrapins while having as little of an effect on the blue crab fishery as possible. It would be helpful to hear from industry on where you have encountered terrapins, whether it be around the area you fish or in your traps. Do these encounters happen often? Do they happen only in specific areas or in specific habitat? Is there a specific time of year you see these animals? We would also like to hear which bycatch reduction device size you prefer and think would work best for the fishery. Would you prefer a choice of multiple options or is there a specific size you like? Or would you rather an either or option where you could either decrease your trap entrance or throat, for example, have an entrance measuring no greater than two inches by six inches, or the option to retrofit your traps with keeping that same example, a two inch by six inch bycatch reduction device. And of course, we welcome any additional thoughts you may have related to this topic. There are a few different ways to provide public comment on the blue crab fishery and the interactions with terrapins. There is online through our saltwater comments page. The link is listed here in blue or staff around the state is also virtually attending organized small group meetings. Please contact us directly if you are interested to learn more about these meetings or wish to organize one. Staff plans to present the feedback gathered in addition to a draft rule proposal tentatively at the December Commission meeting. That meeting is currently scheduled for December 16th and 17th. Remember, this is an agency multi-pronged approach, so that draft rule will include not only information on the bycatch reduction devices, but also possession and take limitations. We welcome and encourage all to attend the commission meeting and provide public comment directly to the commissioners.